Remember the Tesla branded screw that I found on my drive and I mentioned in my build quality video? Well, I've had somebody ask if I can put it on my next vlog post. So let's go have a look. Keep it in the car for luck these days. Another question that I get asked a lot is how long does it take to charge a Tesla? I hate that question. Depending on what you plug into, it could take two days or it could take 30 minutes. So I'm just going to break it down as a quick comparison, superchargers versus other DC quick chargers. But I've also got to do something about my recycling because that is not good. Done. If you go to the Tesla website, there's a graph, that one, which shows you how the power sort of tapers off. So it takes twice as long to get to 100% as it does to 80%. I find that if I pull in for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, I tend to be leaving with an 80, 85% battery, more or less whatever rate you come in with. Because if you come in with 0%, then initially the battery will be taking power at 105 kilowatts. Now, at that speed, it just fills up so unbelievably quickly. Whereas if I pull in at 40%, then, you know, it'll probably do 80, 90, but not for very long. So it doesn't actually take a huge amount longer to go from lower to 80%. What takes the time is the bit from 60 to 80. Just realized we're running out of a few things and it's also lunchtime, so. Just got a little bit of quick shopping to do and I think we're gonna get some lunch. He's <laughs> fed and we now have milk and sugar. The DC quick chargers, they work a little bit differently because they are quite limited in terms of power. They'll only do 40 kilowatts at most, the ones in the UK motorway service stations. What that means is if you plug in at 0%, it does actually does less than 40 because it's the current that's limited and the voltage will be much lower at that rate. So it'll do sort of 35 kilowatts and it'll carry on doing that until it gets to 80% more or less. And then it will start to slow down a little bit. For example, when I went to Norfolk the other day, I plugged into one of the DC quick chargers. I plugged in at 70 something percent and 10, 15 minutes later, no more than that, uh, it was at 90%, which is about the same length of time as it would have taken a supercharger. Maybe a little bit slower, not much though. And that's because the supercharger will have slowed down massively. But if I plugged them both in, and I was at 0% on the battery, then the supercharger would get to 80% in half the time. So if you really want to maximize the amount of power that goes in from a motorway service station charger, you want to pull in at about 70, 75. I hope that's helped to clear up some of the questions. It isn't an easy thing to calculate. When Tesla first uh, released the Model S, the, when you plugged it into a supercharger, it said just supercharging. It didn't give you an ETA. They've since realized that because it's not linear, it's not easy to know when it's going to be finished. So they've tweaked the software. Now you pull into a supercharger and it tells you how long it'll take to reach the target percentage of charge. But with a big battery Tesla, the reality is you use these superchargers so rarely it's not actually particularly important how long it takes, just as long as it takes less time 
then you want to be stopped to, in order to get your coffee, go to the toilet, whatever it is you need to do normally at a motorway service station after two, three hours stuck in the car. That's how long Tesla aim to make that stop for you. By and large, they actually do a pretty good job with that. You're all about the monster trucks, aren't you? Right, we're going to go out for some dinner tonight. Yay. Yummy. I'm going to sign off for the day now. If you've enjoyed today's vlog post, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Give it a thumbs up, which is always very helpful. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye.